bless you, bless you. Let me make sure we are up and running. Yeah. Well, hello. Sorry we're a bit late. My son's doing his schoolwork, and so I thought, yeah, let's come on. I just wanted to share something with you guys. Oh, bless God. Shondo Robobo. Come on. Yeah. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you. I worship you, Lord. I worship you. I worship you, Jesus. I worship you. I love you, Jesus. I love you. Anadia. Hello, 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 hello. Love you. Yes. Love you, love you, love you, love you. Holy Ghost. Hey, Brett, what's up? Yeah, what's up, lady? Hello, I'm wearing the new merchandise. Do you guys see it? Jealous Jesus. One of his names is Jealous, you know. You got to know the jealousy of God over you, man. If you don't know the jealousy of God over you, you will be left wanting. You'll look for people to want you and give you your value in this world. There's such a passionate, romantic love story. You know, hey, T. Murphy, what's up? Love you. George Harris, love you, buddy. Yesenia, love you. Yeah, the jealousy of Jesus. It says, I want you with me. I want you with me. I want you just with me. I want you forever. Yeah, hello. Good morning or good afternoon. Jesus, I worship you. Yeah. Thank you, Regina. Thank you. I'm just reading some of the comments. Thank you, Regina. Yeah. I never knew about the jealousy of Jesus, the passion of Jesus. You know, in my life, I was uh, attracted to these, like, just, just giving an example, I was attracted to, like, very strong men, you know, um, very strong, very passionate, wild, extreme men. But how many of you guys know that kind of passion and attraction can be found in Jesus? Jesus is super strong, super confident, um, super heroic. Jesus is so heroic. He's unashamed of his love affair with you, you know? And so I looked at my life and I was just looking at, you know, the men I used to be attracted to and um, just extremely openly, they were men that would just openly confess how much they cared for me. But how many of you know that human affection is nothing compared to Christ, his affection? Hey, Joe, thank you, buddy. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, what's up? Yeah, but how many of you guys know that? Hi, Amber, bless you. Yeah. I had all this passion growing up, you know, and um, I would give it away to people. And then I would be left wanting, you know, like, what happened to the romance that fizzled out? Or what happened to this great love attraction? Do you, are you guys, can you guys relate to that, man? And so my passion was always misplaced. I had misplaced my passion and I put it into the hands of people that didn't know God and I expected them to love me whole and complete me. And of course that it just doesn't work, man, because you're made for a God sized passion. Like you are. And that's why you're still left wanting. Thank God you are left wanting because it'll give place for Jesus. You know, mm, I love you, Jesus. We don't serve a God that we just talk about in theory, like in a book club and just for knowledge sake. We, we serve a God who becomes real and comforts us, you know, and talk, you know why all these romance movies sell and all these, I mean, you go figure the world is selling like sex. The world is selling, you know, seduction. All of that is a counterfeit to real romance that's found in God. My Jesus, I love you. (sighs) 
everything is selling you a story of what they think beauty is. Um, but it all leaves you wanting. Man, I, it's hard for me to talk about this because In the modeling world, you know, I mean, in the natural, in the modeling world, it's so jacked up. Um, you, you think these people are gorgeous, right? But most of them, man, are ugly. They don't feel awesome on the inside. They are selling a God-given thing and trying to capitalize on it for themselves. They don't understand their beauty is meant to be shared with Jesus. They don't understand all those attributes that the world coins and finds value in is supposed to be shared with the one that gave them to you. And so this topic overwhelms me objectification objectification when we when we objectify something and and set it up as pretty or beautiful that's like the world system of setting up beauty or desire and so what what the world does is they set up a system and they tell you what beauty is and they tell you what should be attractive and they in movies they tell you what love should look like and they're all preaching a message to you but it's not the message of jesus it's not the message of righteous love and holy matrimony you know it is smoke and mirrors that will leave you wanting success when love is concerned is a love that never fails mm -hmm a love that is not needy, a love that is not self-seeking. That's the kind of love that is stronger than the grave. That's the kind of love we are all looking for. How about beauty? I'm not talking about just a physical beauty. I'm talking about the beauty of Christ. You know, it says that there was nothing about Christ that we would desire, but yet all the nations want him. What, what does that look like in our lives, you know? That is what real beauty is. It's, it's looking like God. It's being so solid in who the nature of the Christ is that it oozes out of you, that when you speak, you have the words of life. I don't know why we're talking about all this, but I didn't plan on talking about that, you know? I, uh, yeah, thank you, Jesus. But uh, in the modeling world, I remember um, on the outside I looked great, I guess, but they don't feel great, guys. They are an object. They become an object, um, and people evaluate your looks on what they can market and what they can sell. And so you become an object, and then it devalues your inside, and you place all your value on the outside. That's what I love about Jesus, because Jesus says, I don't care what you do with the outside. It can't give you a new heart. Only dying with Jesus can give you a new heart. Only being co-buried with him and co-resurrected can give you a brand new nature. And the new nature will let you love yourself, regardless if people want you, if your looks are all that, regardless if you're cool, Man, I just love you, Jesus. There's no shifting of shadows in Jesus. There's no hidden agenda in Jesus. He doesn't say, I want you. If you keep your looks up, I'll keep you around. He doesn't say, if you know how to make a nice home, I'll keep you around. There's no qualifications that you have to meet. The only place you have to meet him is in his death. Yeah, the only place you have to meet Jesus is in his death. Who is like Jesus? You want someone that's passionate? Everybody wants someone to love them with their whole life. We all crave that. Everyone wants someone to love them and never leave them before them. Um, 
But we, I mean, we want someone that would give their lives to us. Most of us, I, I don't know anybody that's ever died on a cross for me except for Jesus, willingly. You know, if you don't feel like you're worth anything, the God of the whole universe, he wants you. If, if nobody wants you, Jesus is saying, I'm available. Come and marry me. Would you let me take care of you? Would you let me love you? Would you let me kiss you whole? I mean, read, read, read the word. It's, it's an entire poem. It's poetry. It's a passionate love story about God and his creation that becomes tangible. It's like, as we just read it, you know, the words become alive. And I came on here because yesterday, or I guess this past week, I, I was feeling like, man, I had this like ache, an ache in my heart. And it was just achy. And the ache, it just seemed to echo throughout the day. I had an aching heart that was just beating throughout the day. And it, it lasted for a couple days. But then I, I turned on something and they were talking about Jesus. And I heard my bridegroom's voice and my heart came alive. I came on here to tell you when you feel like you're lonely or you're missing out, take that affection. That is the beginning symptoms of being lovesick for your beloved Jesus. Those symptoms, if misplaced and given to a person, will fail you. But those love sick, love hung over, yearning for your beloved bridegroom, Jesus, those are all symptoms. He's saying, would you just come and be with me? Would you just come and let me love you? I won't mistreat you. I'll love your heart whole. I'll appreciate your uniqueness. And I'll even make you better than, than anything you could ever imagine, you know? Yeah, I was just identifying the symptoms of being hungover in love. And um, the other day I went to go get my truck fixed. And Jesus, shatarabo sonde rababa. Rosondo robobo. Jesus, man. I love you, Jesus. I worship you, Jesus. I love you. You're my best friend, and I love you, Jesus. I just love you. I just love you, Jesus. Whew. The other day, <laughs> mm, 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 mm. would you just allow yourself to live in that place with God? You know? Would you allow yourself to be loved by God? Mm. Would you allow yourself to be loved by God? There's a thought. Would you allow yourself to enjoy God? Everything else is fading. The only thing that remains is your love affair with Jesus. Whew. I love the Holy Spirit. My God, I love the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God has brought me life to my thinking, showed me what real beauty is. It's the Spirit of God that shows you the attractiveness of humility. It's the Spirit of God that shows you the beauty of holiness and purity. You know, it's the Spirit of God that draws you into the nature of the Christ. Everything is available in the Spirit. Yeah, and so... If I can provoke you to be aware of his presence. The other day I was going to get my car fixed, my, my truck fixed. And um, man, I, as I talk about the Lord, he shows up. It's, we don't serve a God that um, is just in our brain, but his presence is tangible, you know. And I, I, I'm going to get back to the truck story. 
but it's very important that you connect emotions with Jesus so that your emotions are in the right place. All of your passions, your desires, your yearning for comfort, love, and adoration. It's his presence, your emotions. Throw them all into Jesus. He'll care for them. He'll protect them. He'll ignite them. You'll have passion beyond any kind of passion you could comprehend. The passion of God will overtake you so much. It'll feel like a weighty blanket. That's how it happens for me. His presence literally feels like a weighty blanket. It feels like a kiss, you know. It, it's my whole heart being kissed by pure innocence, kindness, and adoration. It's the substance of life. It's his very being that kisses me. I, I become very aware of that presence. I don't know. I, I'm kind of just rabbit trailing now. I, I'm just going to, because I'm a little bit woozy here in my brain. So I just speak that over you guys, you know. Oh, the intoxication of Jesus relaxes your natural brain and helps you to think properly. Euphoria in God, you know that euphoria, here's a verse for it, 2 Corinthians 5, 13. If I'm besides myself, it's for God. That word besides myself is extra stimmy. It means out of my body, insane, euphoric, you know. And if you want a, a verse for the weightiness of God, it says in Acts, while Peter yet spoke, the Holy Spirit fell. That word fell, it means to embrace. It means to push down forcibly. It means to envelop. It means to rush. And so there's a couple verses, but I become very aware of his presence, man. Get expectant of him to come in ways that that you don't know about in ways that you look forward to. You know, just you and him, you know. Uh, the other day I went to go get my truck fixed and see what happens. Sometimes my speech, it gets really slow when his presence comes on me. So, um, yeah, I went to get my truck fixed and the guy, the guy is just like telling me, oh yeah, Amber, I did this, this, and this in your truck. And in the background, I heard worship music. And it was my beloved, you know. And the presence of God overtook me so much. I just let myself into it, you know. I know people were talking to me. I know I was at the mechanic shop. But I want him more, man. I value him more. Nothing fulfills me like his presence. Talk about waves of adoration. You know, it's his presence. It's, it's an awareness. As I'm just talking about him, you're becoming aware of his presence, you know. This is the presence of Jesus that will make you do life well. This is manifested glory. Yeah. You know what's in the presence? Peace and righteousness and joy. Amen. You know why I love righteousness? Because righteousness leads to no condemnation. How do you jump over into Romans 8 and have no condemnation? It's only if you believe Jesus really gave you his new nature. And you know it says that we're not to serve sin anymore. It means we're not to even think about our past and in all the jacked up things we used to do. It says that we are no longer committed to, to regret and shame. We, we're no longer to even think about those things. God doesn't think about those things. When he sees you, he sees Jesus. Bless God. Are you guys tracking with me? Are we still together? Oh, T. Murphy, that's gorgeous what you just said. I believe yielding like that is a form of obedience. I believe the same thing. Yeah. Man, what you just said is, is gold. She said, I believe yielding like that is a form of obedience. It is. There's a thought, obedience. Obedience looks like yielding to the Spirit and letting Him love you and believing what He says about you. 
want to be obedient, let him love you. Yield to his thoughts about you. Yield to what he says over your life. That looks like believing Jesus. And you know it's by faith we're counted as righteous. I love how the scripture builds upon scripture. All of that is scripture. It's often people that just get on here and start talking. They, they refocus you. They give you a new lens to look at. You know, thank you, Jesus. I worship you. I worship you. I, I don't know if this does something for you, um, but I I was uh, parenting, you know, I was just parenting my son, Jacob, and uh, and he was in school, and, and I didn't have all the answers for his school, and I began to feel weighed down, and I made a decision, you know, how... If you're a home parent right now, your kids need to be on the computer at a certain time. And so I thought that he could get on his phone and, and do what he had to do, but it didn't work out that way. And I began to think negative of myself, but I let it stay there way too long. And it actually started to affect my physical body. When you don't, when you let regret or tormenting thoughts or beating yourself up. Anytime you let that sit there and fester, it does something to your physical body. Anytime you let the presence of God fester and you meditate on his thoughts, that also does something to your body. Yes. In one there's life and in the other is a bunch of junk. You know, that, that hurts people. And so I just, when I get into times where I'm like, you know, I don't have all the answers, I just begin to thank God for being alive. I thank God that I don't know how I made it this far, God, and but I'm just grateful for the chance to have another day with you, God, and I'm just so grateful for the gift of life. I feel God on that. I'm so grateful for the gift of life. Oftentimes we, we feel like we have to achieve a certain amount of success, you know, whether it be in parenting, whether it be in the business world. But, you know, it says a man plans his ways, but then they're established by God. I'm, I'm kind of just paraphrasing. You know, oftentimes we get caught up in how things should look and we want to achieve certain things, especially like being a parent or, you know, just with certain things. And, and though they're awesome things, if they are robbing us from just living in the moment, loving Jesus, living in the moment and saying, God, thank you for the gift of life. I don't have all the answers. I'm not God. I'll let you be God. And um, people don't belong to me. You know, it's like we take this false sense of responsibility for grooming people into who they should be. And I know that as parents, we, 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 um, we do that. And while it's awesome to want your children to succeed, and you should set them up for success, but ultimately, remember, they belong to God. They're here because God formed them. He loves them way more than you. You just do everything that you know to do. You know, do everything you know to do, and that's enough, man. That's enough. You know, oftentimes, I don't know why I'm talking about this, but oftentimes I, I have freaked myself out, you know, trying to think for my children or being just nervous about them living in this world. And so that stuff doesn't come from God. You know, it's, we serve the God of all hope. You know, we serve the God of all hope and he loves them way, way more than you do. And so God, they're, they're here because God wanted them here. So obviously he has a plan for them. <laughs> you, know, like, you know what I mean? Man, I got so, okay. Well, 
I was I felt so euphoric in God. It was hard for me to think properly, but now I think I got a little bit of my thinking here. Yeah, the other day I just because I have a you know I have I have um I have a couple I have three kids and so uh, just just thinking that I just you know you want to protect your kids, man, and sometimes overthinking their protection will get you frightened and burdened. And so God just had to say, hey, excuse me, you're not God. Would you knock it off? I love them. You know, like, uh, would you just enjoy today? You worrying about the future is robbing your joy from today. You know, I love God, man. I love when he fathers me, corrects me. I love thinking straight. Our whole lives is not found in how we parent. It's not found in the vocation we choose. It's not found in our our legit marriage. It's not found in anything but loving God. Our entire purpose, we're created by God for God. We're put in his world in a body that he made with a spirit he gave us. Obviously, we're made for him. Everything else is just something we get to be a part of. And when we have the nature of Jesus, we get to do life just like him in the earth. I guess maybe that's the message, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Wow, bless God, bless God. You know, I mean, these are like issues that, that, that we all talk about, but we must see Jesus. It's when we talk about Jesus and the beauty of Jesus, things change. Things only change when we tell his story, his romance for you. Oh, yeah, what I was saying is connect your emotions to Jesus in life. When you have a strong emotional attachment, you remember this moment and you replay it over and over in your, your brain. Well, you were meant for an emotional attachment with Jesus. This emotional attachment, these pure love romance emotional feelings when they're placed in God create pathways in your brain, you could say highways to romance. And so when you think about your beloved, things start to actually happen in your body. You begin to release serotonin, dopamine, norepinephrine, oxytocin, all the feel-good chemicals start to be released. Okay, so there's, there's way more than just, um, you know, the euphoria in God. The euphoria is doing something to your physical body. The spirit gives life. Yeah, so as you're just in heart romance with God, listen, what are you going to spend yourself on? You know, you're going to spend yourself on something in life and you'll be left wanting again. You'll be left wanting again. Why not just go, you know, head over heels, passionate in the romance of Jesus? Why not just... Start to believe it. There's a thought. Wonder what would happen if you knew, if it went past the just knowing in your brain stage to you knew in your heart that you were so loved and that that love completed you to where your life was full, to where if you ever achieved anything, great, but if you didn't, great too but you found the one your whole life has been looking for. That's what I'm talking about, the fullness of Jesus. Let him kiss you whole, let him love you whole. Let his, let his body that was broken for you serve you. Receive healing from his body. Take it, it's yours, it's available. Get greedy with it, man. Get obsessed with his body. Get obsessed to what's, mm, I love you, Jesus. In this place, I'm not afraid. In his presence, I'm complete. In this place, my mind is not wandering. In this place, I'm full. In this place, my life makes sense. In this place is where I could stay. In this place, I am complete. 
In this place, my life is full. In this place, I am not worried. In this place, I feel so full. In this place, I'm not trying to get anywhere. In this place, I'm satisfied. In this place, I am not wanting. In this place, I feel whole. I love you, Jesus. I love you, Jesus. In this place, I feel clean. In this place, I feel like I've never hurt anyone. In this place, I believe in myself. In this place, I love myself. In this place, I see beauty. In this place, I see hope. In this place, I see strength. In this place, I see a future. I'm talking about this place being him. It's his presence. In him, I see life. In him, I see bliss. In him, I am euphoric. In him, I can do life. Yeah. Thanks for joining me, guys. I love you guys very much. When preachers get on here, the the main main thing is when you hear someone speak, they draw you into Jesus. They make you want to know him more and they make you want to be alone with him more, you know. And so that's what my heart uh, was doing and yeah, thank you, Jesus. Hi, Sky. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. I worship you. I don't have my mouse, so it's hard for me to keep going in the comments, but I love you guys. Bless you. I will be back on a Monday in the Prophet's Mandate. It's a school, you know. It's a school... Did you guys check out the last school? We had three ladies with us, and they, they did amazing. You know, they were prophesying. They had words of knowledge. They had direction words. They had corporate words. Um, it, it was so cool. We're learning how to prophetically hunt. And so, um, yeah, if you want to do that and you want to be a part of it, it's going to be Monday, 7 p.m., and... Um, you can message me and say, yeah, I'd like to come on live and uh, practice, you know, and I'll bring you on camera to do that. So I just feel the sweetness of Jesus. You know, I feel the sweetness of God. Don't care what people think. Go out of your mind insane in the romance with Jesus. Let him love you to where you are possessed by everything he thinks about you and everything he says about life. You know, let him possess you as the bride. Let him take you as the bride. Let him carry you into a room of intimacy and have union with God. And let him do that so that what you produce out of your life is his nature and that makes you whole. That transforms you. Ooh, Jesus, yeah. And so um, we won't be having church, you know, gathered in glory. We won't be having a service on the 27th because we're going to do our Thanksgiving slash Christmas party for everyone that's involved in the church here. So we'll be celebrating together. We're going to have a dinner. George will be here. I love you, buddy. And uh, love George Harris. He's our he's our worship leader. He's an amazing worship leader here at the church. And so, but we will have a Christmas celebration with 
Malik Edwards. You don't want to miss it. December 11th, right here at Gathering Glory, we will have a Christmas celebration live and in person with Malik Edwards. If you don't know Pastor Malik, he's an amazing psalmist. Uh, he has a church called Relentless. But what I love about Malik is he loves people and he's passionate about God. And so he's going to be on the keys. He's going to have liberty to do whatever God, you know, whatever him and Jesus do here. And we're going to honor Malik. And um, so that's going to be December 11th. And if you'd like to come for that church service, please message me and I'll give you the address. But he's going to kick off our Christmas celebration together. And we're going to um, love on God together, you know, and just be together and, I can just see him now, you know, playing the keys, worshiping, and the glory of God filling the room. Yeah, last time we were in worship, last time we were in church service, blah, blah, blah. Talk about glory, and he comes, right? Father, thank you for letting me talk about you today, Jesus. Thank you for letting me come and speak about you, God. Uh, last Mm. Last church service we had, we had a legit glory cloud come in the room. A tangible sign and a wonder started to manifest. And I thought it was my mascara in my eyes, and so I kept trying to get it out. But then the lights, it was hard to see the lights in the room because of the the cloud in the room, you know, and so, yeah, so I love you guys, bless you, let me see if you guys are saying something, oh, T. Murphy, not sure who this is for, how many times in a day, oh, let me just put this up on the screen, not sure who this is for, how many times in a day is he speaking to you? It's not always for guidance or words of knowledge and so on. More often than not, it's an invitation to be with him. Yield to that. He just wants you to be with him. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Mmm. Ooh, Jesus. Ooh. <laughs> mm, my satisfaction mm. Mm. thank you for that word oh man oh crystal I'm reading what you're saying Amber do you ever listen to Jason Lee Jones, worship or teaching. I've never listened to him. I'll check him out. I, I, I don't, I think I saw his name once, but I don't know who that is. I'd love to check him out. T, that word was, I love that word you just said. Thank you for that. Ooh, yeah. Hi, Donna. Hi, honey. Let me see here. Mm. Okay, guys. I love you guys. Thanks for, let, thanks for Jesus. Thanks for letting us love on you and kiss you together. Mwah. No wonder the brides to be adore him. Oh. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I love you, Jesus. Love you guys. Bless you. Yeah. I'll see you guys Monday, 7 p.m. Uh, in the Prophet's Mandate. Yeah, love you guys. Bless you, bless you.